from Nutrient Ag Solutions. This is Senior Meteorologist Andrew Pritchard with your Canadian Prairie weather story for Monday, August 1st, 2022. Happy August. Looking at temperatures here first thing on Monday morning. Pretty uniform here. A lot of 15s, 16s, 14s across the prairie as we wake up on Monday morning. We'll look at the satellite picture. There's a lot to see. We've got tropical systems down here. We got a cluster of storms, which finally brought a quarter of an inch of rain to my backyard here in what's been a, a very dry summer. And then you head up to the prairie where, you know, you folks are curious about. We've got an active pattern here with more disturbances, more storm systems kind of lifting into the region. We saw severe storms yesterday evening into the overnight across portions of central Alberta. It's going to be another active day across this region as well. So if you live in central Alberta, stay tuned to this video. So here's what we got on the radar as we get started here Monday morning. Area of showers here kind of generally along and south of Highway 16 uh, across portions of central Saskatchewan into southern Manitoba. A couple showers here west of Red Deer as well as we wake up on Monday morning. Nothing like what we had going on about 12 hours ago. We had a tornado near Coronation in central Alberta. Uh, look at this supercell, really classic structure here. You see that hook echo. What I'm talking about here is where you see the reflectivity kind of hook around right there. That's where the strong winds, the rotating updraft here is actually uh, bringing the precipitation around the tornado, which would be somewhere right about here. If we take a look at the radar loop yesterday evening, here's the supercell. Uh, that, that springs up, or I'm sorry, that is not the supercell. Let's go at, it is actually, this is it as it formed. I'm sorry, I meant to say that as it was hitting Coronation, which is down here to the southwest, but watch it move off to the southeast uh, quickly through the evening. And then another storm flares up here, producing high winds and uh, some uh, large hail uh, down Highway 11 west of Red Deer. So several strong storms yesterday, one of which producing a photogenic tornado, both of which uh, the coronation storm and then the one here west of Red Deer producing some very large hail. And again, it's over the same area that we expect to see uh, another round of strong storms today. This is the outlook from Environment Canada. I pretty much agree with this uh, Grand Prairie down toward Edmonton. I think this is going to be the corridor though, and I'll show you a couple maps here to justify that. On the left, you've got instability. This is the fuel for our thunderstorms. And then on the right, you got surface winds. And what I want to point out here is the, the maximum here for instability, the energy for those storms. And then we look at the surface here. I'm showing you the winds, which are coming out of the south, southeast, ahead of the storm system. The area of low pressure kind of just north of Highway 16. And then you've got strong winds coming around the backside of that out of the west. So it's along that line of convergence where the winds are coming together. You get rising motion right here. And then you've also got the support of a very unstable atmosphere. So that leads to vigorous upward motion or intense updrafts, significant thunderstorms. And so we zoom in here where I think this is most likely is going to be right kind of along the line from north of Calgary up toward Red Deer. Once again, Edmonton, you are going to be under the gun. Uh, as we head through the afternoon hours, this is your instability plot. And then what I'm showing you here, this is a supercell composite. And this is just kind of a, it's a parameter. It's a kind of, uh, I don't want to say dumbed down, but you don't want to put too much stock into it. It's a way to kind of combine the instability and the wind shear there and see where the the maximum is or where things are, are coming together the strongest, I guess. And then once again, things kind of pointing toward the Red Deer area, but it's along this entire line. Uh, kind of from the Calgary area up toward Edmonton uh, that I would not be shocked to see several really intense storms producing significant hail over two inches, if not a couple of tornadoes as well. We'll look at the plot here. Sorry, you got some sirens going on uh, outside right now, but uh, this is what the forecast radar from the NAM looks like around 7 p.m. Again, scattered storms popping up. Red Deer, west of Edmonton, maybe as far northwest as Grand Prairie. This would be 10 p.m., and then this would be 1 a.m. So if we look at total precipitation through 4 a.m., this kind of spells out where we think the the you know highest concentration of those strong storms is going to be. Locally heavy rainfall, hail risk, tornado risk. Again, Red Deer, Edmonton, these are towns I'm saying a lot. All the way up toward Calgary. Uh, I'm sorry, all the way up toward Grand Prairie, down toward Calgary is where I think that we could see some of those storms. But then I think this probably the highest risk corridor right there, Red Deer up toward Edmonton. We'll take a look at the animation here from the NAM model. This will get us through, uh, uh, you know, the next several days. We'll talk a little bit less about Monday here as we get going through the rest of this video and a little bit more about where we're headed. So here's your, your NAM forecast. Monday afternoon, Monday evening, scattered storms popping up across this area. Those could continue into the overnight, potentially on into uh, portions of central Saskatchewan by sunrise on Tuesday morning. And then as we get into Tuesday, that risk for a few storms is going to be highest here as we get into portions of southeast 
uh, Saskatchewan into central and southern portions of Manitoba. The storm system clears the area Tuesday night. We should have a quiet Wednesday in most areas. And then Thursday, we see another disturbance making its way in from the west, and we just kind of reset the pattern heading into late week. The instability forecast again, we see that risk for severe storms highest across central portions of Alberta today. And then I wanted to show you as we get into Tuesday afternoon and evening where that risk is going to be highest. Again, the area of low pressure is going to be somewhere around here near the uh, Manitoba Saskatchewan border as we get to 7 p.m. on Tuesday evening. Instability highest across this region. Strong jet stream support coming in here. This is where I would expect a few scattered strong storms. Central and southern Manitoba down into the Dakotas, portions of northern Minnesota. A very active pattern as we head through the next five to ten days. We're going to have numerous storm systems traversing the area. Heaviest rain north of Highway 16, more scattered as you head south. We'll talk about that here in a moment. But here's the jet stream pattern driving all of this. And as we watch this, you can see there's a couple wild cards here that make late week into early next week a little uncertain. So what I'm talking about, let's bring it back here. Notice this low right here off the Pacific Coast. And then we've got that tropical system down here off Baja, California. In the short term, here's the disturbance with the severe weather risk today. You see those strong jet stream winds across southern Alberta as we get into the evening, interacting with that unstable air mass. We'll take it to Tuesday afternoon and evening. Here's the jet stream disturbance. Here's your trough. Again, instability highest across this area. That's where that risk for severe storms will be highest. This system departs on Wednesday. And then I mentioned Thursday, here comes your next system. This next little wave comes in from the west. That one's going to bring a risk of strong storms Thursday across parts of central and southern Alberta, moving on into Saskatchewan and Manitoba as we get into Friday. Now, if I go ahead and bring this back, look what's happening here across the Pacific. We've got these two lows kind of interacting with each other, this Fujiwara effect. And so this is all the way out Thursday, Friday, Saturday. This would send this first disturbance, the former tropical system, into portions of the prairie interacting with that Wednesday Thursday wave and then it takes the original low that was sitting off the Pacific coast brings that one up into the prairie as we get into you know early next week and so these are a couple wild cards here that while it looks active what it does is it reduces our confidence in where and when the exact corridors of thunderstorms and heavy rainfall uh, and organized storm systems are going to be tracking. So I've got really high confidence in this Monday, Tuesday severe weather risk. Pretty good confidence in a renewed risk for severe storms, scattered rainfall uh, of the heavy variety Thursday into Friday. But then we get into the weekend and early next week, my confidence begins to uh, fade quite a bit, which is not atypical, but it's even higher now with a couple of uh, wild cards out there, you know, spinning around each other in the Pacific Ocean. So here's your forecast then, the European model, the precipitation forecast. Here's your Monday, Monday night forecast, uh, severe storms. Here is your uh, Tuesday afternoon and evening, you know, risk for severe storms, heavy, heavier rainfall, excuse me, north of Highway 16. A quiet Wednesday for most folks. Next storm system emerges here Thursday. This is going to do the same thing. Heaviest storms north of Highway 16, Thursday and Friday but still expecting at least isolated to widely scattered strong storms producing locally heavy rainfall and large hail south of Highway 16. And here's what that looks like. You know, the European model, it's not gonna handle this perfectly. It's, you know, by design, not meant to handle those individual thunderstorms perfectly. But here's the theme, overwhelmingly uh, suggesting heaviest rain across portions of central Alberta into central Saskatchewan, north of Highway 16, with the look a lot more isolated to scattered south of that. So you're not dry south of Highway 16. You're not, you know, completely locked out here, but you're talking about hit or miss, highly variable precipitation amounts, but a higher risk for severe storms. Your instability is going to be higher down here. Thunderstorm coverage lower, but a higher risk for severe storms. One more look at this. This is the European uh, on the left, GFS on the right, the ensemble fo uh, forecast probability of picking up one inch or more of total rainfall between now and Saturday. Here's that theme once again. Heavier rainfall north of Highway 16, heaviest across central Alberta into central Sask uh, Saskatchewan, and then south of that, you know, pretty low probability you're going to get an inch of rainfall, but if you get one of those storms over ahead of you, maybe you do. So heavier rain north of Highway 16, less coverage south of Highway 16, but that less coverage comes with a higher risk that any storms that do pop up could be severe, producing hail, a couple of tornadoes, and locally heavy rainfall. 
Temperatures over the next couple of days are going to be quite variable as these systems make their way through. We've seen some excessive heat at times building into the region, uh, and we'll still see, feel a couple of days that are a little bit on the hotter, hotter side. Calgary today is going to be one of those, rebounding again Wednesday as that storm system departs. But as fronts kind of swing through the area here, this will bring shots of cooler air into the region. So we get that front here uh, Monday, uh, Monday p.m. and then Wednesday p.m. across Alberta. Saskatch uh, Sask Saskatoon. Oh boy, I got a case of the Mondays here with my words. Uh, the hottest day here in Saskatoon, you're looking at Thursday. Similar thing here in Re uh, Regina. You see a high near 30 degrees on Thursday. Some cooler days to be found, though, in between. Winnipeg, pretty variable here as those fronts make their way through. Warmest days Tuesday and Friday uh, with a couple shots of cooler air in between.